Today, some night image editing. I'm gonna show you just how easy the new tools in Lightroom and Photoshop make it to blend a Star Tracker captured sharp high resolution Milky Way with a blue hour foreground. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's video. So we're gonna talk a fair bit about night photography, both some cool tools for capturing spectacular Milky Way scenes where you can print them really big and clear, as well as some of the tools in post-production that have made the process so much simpler. This is kind of an update to the Milky Way photography course that I have on my website. You can always check that out right here. Run over to HudsonHenry.com and courses and check out the Milky Way course. But this I'm gonna send out to everybody who's purchased that course is kind of an update with some cool new tools and some cool new techniques that really do make the process simpler. The course goes into a lot more depth about equipment and capture and exposure, but these little updates can really save you hours in post-production and make the field capture that little bit easier. Quick, before we jump in and do that, I just wanna announce that we're bringing in office hours back. It's been on a little hiatus. Things have been crazy since we got back from Scotland. Uh, but we're gonna go through a gallery of all of your favorite images of 2025. So pick out that one special image that's your favorite from 2025. You gotta run through, you gotta pick one from this this year. And in early January, we're scheduling an office hours where we'll do a gallery review and we'll look through all of your favorite images, a big free photography get together on Zoom or YouTube Live. You can run over to hudsonhenry.com slash office hours or click right here and we'll be updating that page with the exact date we're gonna do it and how to submit your image. All right, so let's jump in and let's talk about Milky Way. All right, so there've been a few new advancements, both in post-processing as well as in equipment since we launched the Milky Way uh, course. So I just wanted to give this update video and I'm gonna quickly just show a couple of new tools that I'm using. You know, in general, the course still totally stands, nothing changes as far as capture, except there's a new version of the Move, Shoot, Move. Uh, and it's called the Nomad and it's a simpler piece of equipment. It requires less extra stuff and and the simplest of the kits is the one that I recommend. So I'm gonna show you how that works really quick and then I'm gonna show you how to composite using some of the just amazing tools that are available now in Photoshop, putting the two images together. So let me start with the Nomad. So the new Nomad tracker is smaller, it's lighter, and it has a built-in Arca Swiss rail on the bottom, so you don't need to buy that extra part. And it literally just drops into your pan and tilt Tripod, I'm using the Acrotec Panorama head. This would work just as well on a fluid head so that you can tilt up and down, pan left and right to get that perfect alignment with the laser. Speaking of laser, the laser comes with this little cap that's threaded and there's actually a physical threaded port where the laser shoots right up through the move should move now, all right? So it's no longer this thing that you have to kind of bolt to the side. It threads right in, keeps it aligned nice and perfectly. And then there's an accessory you can mount on the bottom of your tripod head that just threads securely right to the turntable of the move, shoot, move. And I recommend that you think about using the following ball head, the Acrotec ultimate head because of its shape. As you can see, once I set that up, it, the shape of the Acrotec ultimate head is just perfect for a star tracker. So I got links to this, all of this on my site. Uh, obviously run over to HudsonHenry.com and go to the, eight, to the links to all my gear and under night uh, and lighting, you'll find all this stuff. I also carry the ultimate head in my store. It's one of the cheaper original Acrotec heads, not cheap, but cheaper than some of their other newer designs. And it's really, really sweet. This whole system is very, very simple, very effective. It's a nice update to the original Move, Shoot, Move. And you use it exactly the same way you would use the original, except it just has a switch for North, a switch for South, and none of the other complexity um, of, the, of the equipment. So you can also find a YouTube video where I talk about how to use the Nomad. Just search for, for star and move, shoot, move, Milky Way. All right, so let's jump in and talk about how much simpler Photoshop has made this whole uh, compositing business. All right, so I'm gonna show you just how easy it is using Lightroom Classic and Photoshop's latest versions to blend these two images, to composite 
the star tracker, beautiful image of the Milky Way, uh, captured during our Brookings workshop uh, this last year in 2025, uh, with my 20 millimeter 1.8 on the Nikon Z6 III, into this blue hour, no directional light, last light of the evening shot uh, down at Secret Beach, captured with a wonderful group of people, you know, and just to kind of set the stage, we had been running this, this South Coast workshop down on the California-Oregon border. Uh, and one evening we had a, a, about a 20 minute window for the Milky Way. So we drilled and we trained and we got everyone set up and we were practicing. Uh, and we arrived for sunset at this kind of remote location. Uh, you can see here El Jefe, the, the workshop sprinter and the whole crew down here in this spot that was sheltered uh, from light pollution. Uh, set up to do the Milky Way and we got everybody dialed in uh, using our move shoot move mostly nomads a few of the old original move shoot move star trackers setting up with the laser lights this person here is clearly still honing in on the North Star dialing it in start the tracker capture the Milky Way then another night we went down uh, to this spectacular spot Secret Beach one of my favorite places on the southern Oregon coast and we had a nice sunset and then got all keyed up, you know, in position for what each of us wanted as a foreground and shot that blue hour foreground with the very last light before the sky goes to complete darkness with stars, you know, no directional light. This, if you look, is a five second exposure at 800 ISO. I was at f5.6 uh, with my 14 to 24 millimeter lens just in order to, 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 um, to have a little more depth of field, you know, for the foreground rocks blending all the way into the background. All right, so what we need to do is take this blue hour scene and blend it into this Milky Way scene. And I'm gonna go back into my grid view. I just hit the G key, you can always click right here in Lightroom 2. We're just running around in the library. And, and I will say, I've gone in and I've, I've I shot these images with my Nikon uh, Z6 III uh, so a 24 megapixel camera that has amazing low light capabilities and I shot them, you know, the, the Milky Way, pretty sure I did it 800 ISO. I think but shot both of them at 800 ISO, which is an incredible noise resolution due to the dual gain technology in that camera. Sort of having 800 ISO be this, this just amazingly clean low noise uh, setting. And I went into develop and I added a little contrast and editing just to make the stars pop out. And I also went into the detail panel and I bumped it up to super resolution. So as you can see, we're looking at now a 96 megapixel result from that 24 megapixel file. Pretty darn amazing. And that 20 millimeter uh, 1.8 Nikon lens is just incredible. You know, very, very little coma or chromatic aberration and just pinpoint across the frame. All right. so. This gives me much more to work with and I can resize them against each other. Both of these I've up uh, to 96 megapixels from 24. And it's as simple, like I said, it's as simple as jumping into the detail panel in develop and clicking that super resolution button. Boom, does it on the raw file, all right? So we've got big high res images to work with despite shooting it with a lower res camera, which to me makes those lower res, great low light, high ISO cameras kind of special. So we're gonna jump in here. I'm gonna select both of these images, all right? They're both selected. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say edit in, okay? And under all of my options, I'm a person who works in OM1 in Photoshop, at the very bottom is open as layers in Photoshop. And that's what we're gonna do. That's gonna launch Photoshop, all right? Bringing it up, it should take it just a second. Here it comes. And it's gonna open both of these images as layers within a single Photoshop document, all right? If you don't see layers, you can always get to all the different Photoshop um, palettes for, you know, t um, um, windows right here. You just click on, well, it's still loading. Give it a second. We're still loading both of these images. And at 96 megapixels, they're big images, all right? So, it, okay, now we're loaded in. You can always get to layers just by going down here and clicking, all right? But we see our two layers. And if we turned off the Milky Way, we'd see Right underneath, we have our beach scene, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna put the beach scene on top of the Milky Way. I'm just gonna grab that layer and drag it up so that it's the top layer. Now, if I turn it off, the Milky Way's underneath. And I wanna select the foreground in my image. And the easiest way that I know to do that is to go in here, I click my quick selection tool, 
all right? And this does not need to be perfect. If you don't see the quick selection tool, you long click, you might see the object selection tool or the magic wand by default. The quick selection tool is in there. You just choose that from those three by long pressing that button. Any of these with a little tiny triangle there can have multiple tools. So we've got our quick selection tool and you can resize that with the bracket keys on your keyboard. All right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start clicking in the sky and look at that, boom, we just selected the sky. Now you say, why did you select the sky? Well, it's this big uniform thing. It's real easy for Photoshop to say, let's select the sky, the bright part. And it's not perfect, right? We got these trees and stuff. Don't worry about that at this stage. Do not worry about it. And what we've got running now is a selection, right? These little marching ants. We're gonna go up to the select button and I'm gonna invert that selection. Boom. Okay, well now the marching ants are going around my foreground. Everything's selected except the sky, all right? So what do we do with this, all right? We're still here, we have this selection tool active, and if you look up at the tool options up here, one of them says select and mask, and that's what I want. I'm gonna click on that, select and mask, and that opens up this whole new window, all right? Everything's a little different here, okay? And the big thing I want you to note up here, there's a lot of controls. You can go to other videos on YouTube or tutorials about Photoshop and learn what all of these do. But the big, there's only a couple things I need you to know about in here. And one is where it says view here, we have all these different view options. Right now we're on onion skin. We could look at marching ants and all of a sudden, oh, there's our selection back again. What I want is on layers. Aha. And now it's only going to show what's selected and the layer beneath where it's not selected. That is key. Now all of a sudden we can see what we're doing, kind of like we're working with the final result here, okay? And what I wanna go ahead and do is this little tool right here, okay? There's, there's the quick selection tool like we were using before and then the edge refinement tool, okay? Um, and the refine edge brush tool, okay? And again, you bring it out here over your image and I wanna refine the edge. It needs it, right? This isn't perfect. And so I'm gonna actually make it a little bit bigger with the bracket key, all right? And I'm just gonna start painting over my edge, the whole edge, all right? I wanna do the whole thing. Whoa, look at that. All of a sudden, it's refining that selection through this whole area. And I let go. What are you talking about? How easy? is that? I mean, holy cow. All right. So shebang. Now I'm just going to click OK. And it's not going to look like that, but it has, that's the selection. We have refined this selection massively now. Okay. What we want to do is mask the unselected part of the scene out. All right. So our selection is the foreground. And I'm going to go up here to layer, the layer menu at the top. And I want to come down to layer mask. All right, and I want to do one that says reveal selection. What that's gonna do, it's gonna put a black mask over what's not selected and a white mask over what is selected so that we only see the selection of this layer. Watch, click, poof, Milky Way, right? Outrageous, and there enough, boom, you could be done, right? Let's, let's zoom in on this a little bit. We got a 96 megapixel Milky Way result that just looks fabulous, don't we? Holy cow, okay. If you wanted to futz around with resizing each, I'm gonna give you one more. I don't, I don't wanna to go too far here and too much of a fire hose, but it, we have a lot to work with with our foreground, right? It's 96 megapixels, all right? So I'm gonna right click that layer, that layer that has the mask, that layer that has the image. And I wanna, I actually wanna make sure the image is what I have selected, that little white frame around that. I wanna right click that and I wanna say convert to smart object. And it's gonna turn that layer into what's known as a smart object that I can work with independently in some different ways. It sort of makes it something I can resize and do some cool stuff with. And, and what I wanna do is I wanna grab this move tool, all right? And that gives me all these little pull points. And if I wanted to resize this a little bit, all right, let's, let's, let's make the foreground just a little bit smaller in our scene, okay? Just a little smaller compared to the Milky Way. We shot these with two different focal lengths. And now I'm gonna select the layer with the Milky Way and I still have that move tool. I can sort of shift it around. I don't wanna cross the edge there, but I can shift it around to kind of bring a little more Milky Way out. I can raise it because we were tilted up a little bit when we were out shooting it on the horizon. Um, 
with the van the night that we shot it, I can start dragging this Milky Way up until, oh, I see there's the horizon, all right, which is pretty similar to where the, the, the ocean was there. All right. So that's just to me a little bit better, a little grander Milky Way, a little more alignment with the two focal lengths. Bam, okay? I don't need to resize the Milky Way at all. I could, but I don't need to. I think that looks great, okay? And now all I need to do is crop to kind of make sense of all this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the Command key and the minus. The way I'm zooming around is Command plus, Command minus. Command zero gives you a fit view so you see everything. All right, and now that I'm in the crop view, I'd like to bring the crop down to where it's in the trees on this left part of the image. I wanna bring it over, it'll, it'll snap right to that edge. And we're pretty nicely snapped right now. That looks good. I'm just gonna hit the Enter key to accept that crop. Boom. I would call that done, folks, all right? So at this point, I would, I would go back and right-click this layer that we turned into a smart object and say rasterize layer, boom, all right? That sort of undoes that, all right? And now we have that masked layer. We have the Milky Way in the background. It looks really gorgeous throughout. I mean, it is just dead simple. What used to be a painstaking task that took hours and hours is now literally child's play with some of the new tools that we have. All we have to do is hit save. I'm gonna hit Command S. You could also run to the file man menu. But right now it says it's saving it. Uh, and it's gonna save it right back into Lightroom. All right, when I go ahead and, and minimize Photoshop, we'll be back in Lightroom and boom, there you see it. All right, well, I didn't fully minimize Photoshop, did I? Let's just quit Photoshop so we don't have the tools sitting on top. Boom. There we got it. It is in our collection with the other images done and done. Um, and you know, if we take a look, we did reduce it in size just a little bit. If I hit my I key and I have a look, um, we still have a lot of megapixels to work with, I'm pretty sure. Seven, two, two, four, enter, one, zero, eight, three, four times. 78 megapixels. All right, folks. That ought to print pretty beautifully. All right, so the tools for both field capture and post-production just seem to be getting better and better every year. I feel like, you know, things are possible now that weren't just a year or two ago or took hours of painstaking work instead of just a few seconds with a really smart tool. So this is exciting stuff, and I hope that you, you got a few hints and tips out of this that could be useful in your own workflow. If you're interested in any of the tools that I showcased, you can run over to my website, hudsonarray.com slash ATS links, and go to the night section. Uh, and if you do go over and look at a new Move, Shoot, Move Nomad Star Tracker, they put together a kit that's my recommendation, which is the simplest and most affordable of all the kits. I don't think you need anything but that star tracker and a pointer. Uh, so look for the Hudson kit and make sure to use the Hudson discount code when you check out. All right. I hope everybody's out there staying safe, staying creative. I hope you're enjoying holiday family food and we'll see you next week.